Okay, fantastic. So, um, yes, I'm an accredited practicing dietitian in the mid north coast area where I'm based. I'm one of the only dietitians that's kind of got a bit of a background working with patients with neurological disorders, um, particularly Parkinson's disease. It is a real interest area of mine. Uh, I do work a lot in aged care facilities as well. And I just think there's so much that can be done with food. Um, for these types of conditions. I wanted to make today a pretty general chat. Um, there's so much I could talk about, so I wanted to keep it pretty broad, but any questions you've got at the end, feel free to fire them away. A um, lot of information in this, so I'm, I'm very happy to send across the slides as well if anybody wanted to get that information so you don't feel like you have to manically write or anything like that. So today I'm just gonna cover um, why nutrition is important. Um, maintaining a healthy weight and what that looks like, constipation, uh, medications and food, and then how to eat well easily. Because I think it's one thing to say, got to eat well, um, but we all know that life sometimes gets in the way. So we want to make it really, really easy to still achieve that. So how does nutrition help? Uh, you'd all be aware there's no cure um, and nutrition is not going to cure, but it can make quite a big difference to your quality of life, um, particularly in the way like managing your symptoms. So fatigue can really help making sure that you're getting enough to prevent as much fatigue as possible. Keeping your gut happy. Um, a lot of us would know that there are a lot of gut concerns. Um, and so right, eating the right foods can really help with this. Managing your weight. Obviously food has a big impact on what we weigh for everyone um, and particularly important in Parkinson's. How to manage swallow issues and how to eat properly for that as well. And it can also impact how effective your medication is. So it can really interact with your medication and block that absorption and not be as effective if we're not aware of what we're eating, when we're eating around our medication. And I'll go into that a bit further later. So what's our goal with nutrition? Um, I think this is for everyone that we really should be aiming to eat a balanced diet. So the core of our diet really wants to be those fruits, those vegetables, those whole grains, healthy fats, lean meats, fish. Really, we want things that are nice and high in fiber and full of those nutrients. I always like to think of this picture because it really is eating the rainbow. Um, it's not complicated. It's not pro, you know, processed foods that are full of boxes. It's going back to where we used to eat and getting those good things from nature. Moving on to weight management. So many of the patients that I see do struggle to maintain their weight and keep weight on, and they'll feel that they go through periods of dropping weight quite quickly. This can be due to many um, things related to Parkinson's. So lots of excessive movement or shaking just means we need a lot more calories to stay the same weight. Our appetite can change. We can be nauseous, which is related to our medication. As I said, we can get those gut concerns of constipation. And a lot of times when you're constipated, you don't want to eat, as well as having no energy to prepare meals or the impact of poor mental health. And I see this across the board with everybody and their um, illnesses. Poor mental health really does limit our motivation to eat. A few strategies for keeping weight on, and I want these to be very easy and practical. We want to be choosing foods that really pack a punch. So high protein, high calorie foods, because we all can only eat in a certain amount of foods and we can get full. We want to make sure the foods we are choosing are those ones really rich. So think dairy, meat, nuts, avocado, you know, your low volume foods, your fruit and veggies, they're not so much the pack a punch. They're the ones that give us the nutrition. But when we're looking to keep our weight on, we really want to be focusing on those higher calorie foods. I think grazing is a fantastic strategy for keeping weight on. You know, it's, it's quite easy for us to do if we're at home to just be constantly going to the fridge things here and there. And that can be a great way to overcome a small appetite. If you don't feel like sitting down to a large meal, that's fine. Just have six smaller ones broken up throughout the day, every couple of hours, having something small, something simple. You also want to learn what works for you. So instance, I don't actually have a big appetite at night, so I have a really big breakfast to make sure I get as much nutrition as I can. So it's good to have a think and reflect back, when am I most hungry? When am I too tired that I don't like to eat a full meal? And then trying to get the bulk of your nutrition or a big meal in when you know your appetite's going to be good. Some other things is making the most of adding extras. And this is something I do a lot in residential facilities is looking at how can I get more calories to a meal of the same size? So things like mashed potato or pasta or rice, adding in a spoon of butter or a drizzle of olive oil. 
chopping up some nuts and some avocado into salads and adding a bit of extra mayonnaise, a little bit of cream in your porridge. It's very easy to bring up the calories in these meals with these type of things without increasing how big the meal is. A lot of the time it can be easier to tolerate a liquid rather than a whole meal. So smoothies, milkshakes, things like that can be really easy ways. You can put anything in a smoothie, peanut butter, banana, anything like that. Oats, these are great ways to blend it all up, makes it quite easy to eat. And that can be important when you are tired and don't want to eat and don't have as much energy to chew. This can be a great way to keep your calories up. I like to cook once and eat twice. So preparing meals in advance, freezing them, having leftovers in the fridge for the next day, really capitalize on that time that you feel good to cook. And then keep those leftovers for when maybe you don't feel so good. And then as always with every element of this presentation, ask for help. There would be so many people around you, so many services available that would be happy to help you. They just need to know you want the help. The other side of the spectrum. So I had an initial assessment yesterday with a patient who had really struggled with following having um, DBS surgery, deep brain stimulation with weight. So we looked at, well, what's going on? What's your lifestyle looking like? And there's a lot we can do as well. So this can be due to decreased physical activity. You might be tired. You might not have the best mobility anymore. So you're not moving as much. Your treatment can increase appetite for some people. And then again, with that poor mental health, emotional eating, a lot of the time, food gives us that release, that comfort, and sometimes that can add up. So some strategies to prevent any unwanted weight gain. Find exercise that works for you. This can be anything. Like for me, it's dancing around my lounge room is going to be my exercise's choice for a while. And that's great. Anything that gets you moving, even if it's parking the car further away, or even if it's I'm going to walk to the kitchen and back a couple of times a day, it can be the simplest thing. Anything that's more movement than you're doing now is amazing. We kind of want to go the other side of things versus what we were doing before and focus on low calorie fiber rich meals. So fruits and veggies, nobody's putting on huge amounts of weight from eating broccoli because it's so filling. These are the type of things you want to be having more often if you are finding that weight is an issue for you. Limiting your intake of high fat sugar and snacks. So those sweet treats that we all love for our soul food, that's a sometimes thing, especially if weight is a concern. And then getting the support you need, both mentally and then if you need any other support with meal prep, things like that. I'm going to move on to gut concerns. And there are quite a few side effects um, of the condition and of the medications, but I'm just going to focus on constipation today because it's something that I see everywhere, I hear everywhere. Um, and as someone who's you know, gone through bouts of it, I know it's not pleasant and it's something we all should be tackling. Um, favorite conversation, talking about bowels, that's just me as a dietitian. So today, like, I, I just wanna make sure everyone knows it's very normal, it's okay to talk about, um, and it is something we do need to deal with. Um, many different causes, changes in gut muscles, medication side effects, lifestyle changes. Like I said, you might not be moving as much as you used to or dietary changes. You might not be cooking as much as you used to. It is really, really important to manage constipation because this can impact how effectively your medication is absorbed. So if you think if your gut's all blocked up and slow, everything slows down. So breaking down that medication is not gonna happen as quickly and that's when your medication won't be as effective. As I said before, it can impact how hungry you get and it can also cause pain. It's not very comfortable to be constantly feeling like this and it is something we want to manage early and manage long term. So how do we manage it? Obviously, there's lots we can do from a medical side of things, but from the food side of things, I think of it like the three F's, fluid, fibre and fitness. I think if you tick off all of those boxes and it's still not happening for you, then we look at the medical management, but there's always something we can be doing. So fluid, making sure we're trying to get, you know, six to eight cups of water per day. And I know a lot of us struggle to do this. So it can be simple as having a big water jug, filling it up in the morning and knowing I need to get through this today, preferably by three or four o'clock. So you're not waking up all night to go to the toilet. Fiber, fiber is really, really important. It's the part of plant foods that we can't break down and it keeps our gut moving through nice and happy. If we don't have enough fiber, we don't have enough things to move through to actually have a bowel motion. So we do need to be quite mindful that we need to have fiber foods every day. And then fitness. 
even gentle walking can start to stimulate the bowel muscles and stimulate that movement. So something as simple as a 10 minute walk after breakfast or whenever you feel that's your regular time can really help get a bowel routine back in place. Small frequent meals I think is important as well because we don't want to think of our body as just this one thing, we give it a huge whack of stuff at once and expect it to deal with it. It likes things here and there, kind of like being drip fed. So if you do feel like you're struggling with constipation, spread your meals out a little bit. Make sure you're chewing things well. Give your body a helping hand in breaking them down. And then, of course, speaking to your doctor if this is a long-term issue. There's lots of different medications we can use and we can just find the one that works for you. Just a few easy tips for increasing fibre intake. I think probably 90% of everyone I see patient-wise would not be meeting the fibre guidelines. And you actually do need to look at your food choices to actually fit them. So choosing a high fibre breakfast cereal or just even adding a few tablespoons of bran to whatever you're already eating. I try and add a few tablespoons of bran to my wheat bix just to get the fibre intake up a little. Choosing high fibre varieties of foods, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer, but your whole grain breads, your pastas and your crackers, they're a great way to get that fibre intake up. Beans and lentils, so tinned kidney beans, chickpeas, even frozen peas, amazing source of, of fibre. And you can put that in anything. You can put black beans into spaghetti bolognese. You can sneak them into soups, anything like that. And then, as always a principle, two pieces of fruit daily is a great way to make sure you're getting in not only fibre, but your micronutrients as well. In terms of medication and food, so it's pretty common that I feel like we don't in the medical system go through this as much as we need to with our patients. Um, and so it is something as a dietitian I do quite focus on when I meet a patient. I always try and find out their medication timing and what medication they're on. Because the medications that you can see here, the ones that contain that active ingredient levodopa there, the part there, is broken down in the gut in the same place that needs protein is broken down. So if you think, oh, I'm going to eat a cup of milk and take my medication, they're both fighting each other to get absorbed. The problem with that is most of the time food wins because there's a lot of other things in food the body wants. And that can mean that your medication is not absorbed or broken down as much and it won't be as effective. This is particularly, sorry, just about the protein element of foods. So when I talk protein, I'm talking your meats, your dairies, your cheese, your nuts, your eggs. So really that protein element is the part of the meals that we need to look at watching. I could watch you. you told me that. So to combat this, current research says we want to be having our medication on an empty stomach, 30 to 45 minutes prior to meals or two hours after. I do hear a lot of people say that they do feel really nauseous when they have their medication if they don't have it with food. So my best advice to that is to try and have it with food that contains little protein. And that's usually our carbohydrate or our starches. So a piece of toast or some crackers or something really dry and bland, just trying to avoid those eggs, those meat kind of foods. But 30 to 45 minutes before, give your stomach the time to break it down and digest it and then have your meal. This is really important to talk to your doctor about as well. You need to form a medication and a meal schedule that suits you because the time you wake up versus the time someone else wakes up can be completely different. So please just discuss with your doctor what's going to work for you. I won't talk too much about Swallow um, because I'm not a speech pathologist, but it, they are people that I work with quite closely. Um, depending on where you're at with the disease, it can impact your swallow and it's important to be aware of. Um, so it can start to feel like things are getting stuck in your throat or some things are harder than they used to be. So it's worth when that you do start to notice that to let your health professional know. It can range from being quite mild to quite severe um, and there's that risk of ending up in hospital with things like pneumonia or choking hazards. It's very easy um, once a speech pathologist, once you get into see a speech pathologist, they assess your swallow, they have a look and we can work with them to make sure you're still getting the nutrition you need in a safe way. So after all that information, well, what do I actually eat? What does this all mean? I think if we can just think of these key principles of take it back to basics, eat a wide variety of foods, predominantly from fruits and vegetables, meat, fish, seafood, bit of dairy, and some good grain foods. 
we're kind of on the right track. So you can see here we've got the Mediterranean diet. Um, there's a lot of good research for a lot of health conditions with the Mediterranean diet. And I think it's purely because it's, it's simple, it's wholesome. They also eat food together socially. You know, they really enjoy their food. They're not overcomplicating anything. The Australian Guide to Healthy Eating um, on the side there has the five core food groups. Um, and the rationale is that if we eat some things from each of these core food groups each day, we're going to be hitting our nutrient needs. So the basics really is, like I said, eat a varied diet. Eat all of the colours that you can possibly eat. Eat balanced portions. So I put up this little portion plate here and, and I like to use it for most of my meals. And I feel like you can use it when you eat at a family member's house or you're eating out. You want half of that plate to be filled with veggies. That's where you're getting all your vitamins, your vitamin C, your vitamin K. There's so much goodness in vegetables and yet so many of us aren't meeting it. So if it's the one thing you take from today, eat more vegetables. A quarter of the plate, we really want to be a good quality, low GI, which means slower broken down, high fiber carbohydrate. So a piece of grain bread or some potatoes, something like that. And then a quarter of our plate, we want to be our meat or our chicken or our fish. Eating this way, make sure that you're getting everything your body needs without overdoing it. Like I said, drinking plenty of fluid, six to eight cups or one and a half liters, setting that jug out two serves of fruit, five serves of veggies, and then trying to get some dairy in each day. I think a lot of us seem to forget about dairy, um, but osteoporosis is quite common in this country. Calcium is really important. And so having three serves of dairy, you know, a yogurt for morning tea, a glass of milk, a bit of cheese on our sandwich, it's really important to try and remember all of these whole food groups. So what do we eat? These are some of my favorite, very easy breakfast options. Eggs on toast. Can't go wrong with eggs on toast. And you can boil eggs. You can boil a whole packet of eggs on a Sunday and they can keep in the fridge for four days ready to go. So it's really just put the toast in the toaster, smash some eggs on top. Avocado if you're feeling fancy. Smoothies, I think also are a great way to have start the day, especially if you feel your appetite's not as high in the morning, which is a very common for a lot of people. Banana, yogurt, peanut butter, anything you like. So you can throw in some veggies if you're feeling adventurous, but really anything that you like the flavor of, if you like berries, if you like strawberries, watermelon, blend it up and have that for brekkie. Rolled oats, I have porridge every day. I think I'm, well, except for the weekends, which is a bit fancy eggs, but porridge to me is just an easy go-to. It cooks in 90 seconds. You can put any fruit you want on it, um, any sort of milk you can add to the top, cream, yogurt. Yogurt and muesli, again, an easy option. There's some really good high protein yogurts now. Um, I like those because these little tubs of yogurt are the equivalent of having three eggs worth of protein. And that can be really important if we're trying to keep our muscle on us. So try and look for protein yogurts in the supermarket. Just look for it. It'll say protein on the label. Cheese tomato toasted sandwich. Easy. Very good source of calcium, good source of fiber from the bread. And you're getting some vitamin C from the tomato. Good old baked beans. I think baked beans are a fantastic underrated food. Um, very good source of fiber, good source of protein. Throw that on some whole grain bread and you've got a great start for your day. All of these meals, whether it's breakfast, lunch or dinner, can be swapped out. You can have breakfast for dinner, it doesn't matter. It's all about just making sure at each eating opportunity, you're trying to get the most from your meal. You're trying to get some good protein, whether it's eggs or chicken or yogurt trying to get some good carbohydrates and bread or crackers and some fruit in there and some veggies would be great. Tuna on crackers, one of the easiest lunches you can go for. Um, tuna is really, really good for you. John West has got this amazing um, new variety of their tuna called Calcium Fortified. They basically just crush up the bones of the tuna in there. So it's no fancy additives. It's just the tuna bones, but it's got the equivalent of three cups of milk worth of calcium in this tiny little tin of tuna. So easy for those of us that struggle to get in calcium. Throw that on with a sliced cucumber and you're good to go. Can't go wrong with a good old sandwich. Load it full of veggies, some avocado, whatever you've got, a, a roast barbecue chicken you can buy and shred it off, put it on sandwiches for the week. Some smoked salmon, whatever you're feeling like. Wraps, again, another easy option. Shouldn't take too long to make. Even if you, when you've got a win and you're feeling good, cut up all your cucumber and your tomato for the week, leave it in the fridge ready to go. 
Nothing wrong with tin soup and a piece of cheesy bread. There's a lot of really good nutritious tin varieties out there. And at the end, I'll go through a resource that you can take to the supermarket that shows you what's the better options in terms of canned food or frozen meals. Again, a salad. This salad here really is just a tin of baked, tin of black beans, a tin of corn, some microwave rice, avocado, and some barbecue chicken from the shop. That would take less than five minutes to make. You don't have to really cook anything. You put it in the microwave, you chop it up, and it's done. So those are the ways you can get all this good, colourful food in nice and quickly. Dinner. Dinner, sometimes I get a lot of clients saying that they are quite fatigued at night time and they don't want to eat as much. So I tend to be using a lot more, I guess, pre-ready foods uh, at dinner time. So we've got our pre-cooked pastas these days that are fantastic, easy options to have ready. Like I said, I'm such a big fan of a roast chicken. I can't see why we would stop at Hungry Jack's and buy burgers if you can go and buy a roast chicken and then a cut bag of salad mix. It's all done for you um, and it'll save you a lot of money. Scrambled eggs on toast. Scramble a couple of eggs, bit of cream in the microwave on two bits of bread. It's a great, nutritious, high fiber, high protein meal. And meal prepping. I think I haven't spoken too much about that, but really that a lot of these meals, particularly ones with rice or pasta or roast veggies, they can keep in the fridge for four or five days or in the freezer for months. So it is great if you do feel like cooking something, make a big batch make a big batch of slow cook stuff and pop it in the freezer. There are always times when we don't feel like cooking. And I think it is important to always have an option on hand just for those moments. The bottom one is this great new products. They've got all these tuna and rice meals now that have a bit of rice, a bit of beans. Again, a great way to get in some good fiber and some good protein. Snacks are really important. Like I said, with that grazing mentality, um, try and always have something with you throughout the day. Um, Whatever your schedule's like is fine, morning tea, afternoon tea, supper, but do try and have some snacks on hand for those moments where you get a bit peckish. Again, smoothies, very easy. Custard and tin fruit, great, easy way to do it. Try and get the tin fruit that's made in juice, but pears, things like that can be great for constipation. Um, I prescribe them every day to clients, so try and get that in. Crackers and dip, crackers and cheese. If you're finding anything is getting harder to chew and swallow, um, I always just go for little tiny cubes of cheese, um, some boiled eggs cut up can be easy to grab and snack on. Fruit, again, can be nice, cut, easy, soft, papaya, kiwi fruit, things like that, strawberries. Mashed avocado on toast, fantastic snack. Lots of good healthy heart fats, lots of good protein and fiber there. Cottage cheese, I think it's a bit underrated. I know it's a bit of a hot topic. It's either you love it or you hate it. But cottage cheese can be added to tuna and make a little dip. You can have it on toast. It's a really, really rich source of protein and calcium. Wholemeal muffins. So, you know, those English muffins, that with peanut butter on it, great snack, really easy to do. This kind of little segment of the presentation just talks about, well, how do I build a meal? What's the basics? So start with a protein, like I said, grab something easy. It can be a tin of tuna, a tin of salmon, a couple of boiled eggs, frozen piece of fish. That's your start for your meal. Then we bulk it up with some veggies. These are all pre-cut veggies. And I know, I know veggies are very expensive right now. Um, it's something that, considering how much I eat, this is, I've got to think about. But frozen vegetables are a great option. You can go and get the corn, peas, and carrot mix, I think is in it, is $2 a kilo at Woolworths in the frozen section. $2 a kilo is amazing, rather than going and paying $30 for a lettuce. So really... We just need to think outside the box. Most of the time outside the box is frozen veggies. Um, peas are $2 a kilo. Again, a great option as well. And these are all things you can just chuck in the microwave. Steam fresh veggie packets, 90 seconds. They're portioned out. You're ready to go. Having them on hand, I think, is a no-brainer. I think all households should have these things ready. And then cut up salad mixes. If you're feeling like a salad, grab a cut, ready to go. No effort needed there. We want to add our carbohydrate on, like I've said, for fiber, quarter of that plate. Microwave cup of rice, a couple of crackers, a piece of bread, tin corn, four bean mix. These are all quite cheap options that you can have in the cupboard to build your meal. And then adding on some fat, some olive oil, some avocado, some nuts, a bit of butter, a bit of mayonnaise. Aim for one to two tablespoons there. And that is a complete meal you can bake, make at home in less than five minutes. You just got to have the ingredients in the pantry. So like I've said, meal prep when your energy is the highest, double a recipe, freeze the remaining. 
When you're tired and you're finding you're just not going to sit down to eat a steak, go for things that are easy to chew. Yogurt, scrambled eggs, smoothies, soups. Try and really, I guess, touch base with yourself and where you're at for that day. What can I handle right now? Because like, my nutrition is still important, but I'm not going to sit down to a huge meal. Again, purchase frozen or convenience meals, and I'll go through that guide in a minute. Buying your pre-cut, pre-cooked things. They've got everything now. Pasta sauces, everything you can think of. And a lot of them are actually quite good in terms of nutrition. It's just about knowing where to look. And then there's nothing wrong with engaging in a meal provider service and linking in with one in your community. Um, definitely something worth talking to your health service and your health team about if you're starting to think, hey, this might just give me a bit of a break a few nights a week if I've got something delivered for me. So that's the resources um, I would recommend and I'll send them through as well if they're not already going, they probably would be. But I really like the Nutrition and Parkinson's um, guide. It's quite extensive and it goes into more detail than I have today. And I will just exit and show. So this, and can everyone see this? Get a bit of a nod. Yeah, okay. So this guide here, and I'll send it through as well. It basically goes through, if you're looking on the shelves, what is a good option for me in terms of a soup? If you're looking in the refrigerated soup section, what should I be choosing? And then it goes into more detail of, okay, I shop at Aldi. What are the best frozen choices for me there? And there's a list here. Some of them will say it's a complete meal, so you just eat it. Some will say add vegetables to this. So that's where you could have a few of those steam fresh veggies, just so we know we're getting our veggies in. But it's a great resource, goes through every brand they can think of, McCain, Lean Cuisine, um, Home Brand, anything you can think of. It just helps us to know that because it is pretty overwhelming sometimes when you go to the supermarket, this can make it easy to make sure I'm picking something that's nutritious, but it's also easy and convenient for me. So I'll send that round as well. Um, okay. So that is me rattling on um, and that's me done. So I really like this quote. I think Sometimes we get overwhelmed with nutrition and thinking, oh, I've got to change everything and do everything. And that's not the case. Every time you eat is an opportunity to eat something good, okay? Nutrition is about really in that moment, what am I choosing? Is it the best for me? Is it the best for my body right now? Or I'm having something I really love that's good for my soul right now. And it's okay to do both. But I hope you guys all learned something today. Um, and there were some sort of interesting things in there. <laughs>